Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of my YouTube channel. Today what we're going to be talking about is stress management. Now I know I've done a few videos on this before, however, I thought I would just address it again because I have been reading and listening to some podcasts and one thing that is pretty consistent is that we continue to be under a significant amount of stress in our lives. Now, a long time ago, um, and I think I even go over this, um, I was watching this new show about how to manage our stress, and the expert on the show said that we should just not have stress in our lives, and I found that to be pretty fascinating because I was like, well, how do you do that? And in fact, even the woman that was interviewing her said, how do you do that? And, and the woman really couldn't answer, and then she kind of re-evaluated what she was saying and she basically then said well it's not about not having stress in your life it's learning how to manage it more effectively and so that's really what I want to talk to you today about and I just want to share some of the things that I have found to be helpful not only in my own personal life but also some of the things that I've been talking to friends about as well as some of my clients so stress and stress on the body and what happens and you know <clears throat> stress really puts our body in that fight or flight state a lot of times whether we're consciously aware of it or not when we are stressed our physical body responds as well as our emotional body you know when we're under a significant amount of stress and we don't manage it or we don't take care of ourselves typically what happens is you know we suffer physically whether it's high blood pressure it's um, gastro issues um, or digestive health issues it's um, you know it's a it, it can be many different things and I think that we need to pay attention and I know you guys know this I'm just highlighting it for you so for example um, in one of my favorite books and that I've talked a lot about, Stress, Loss, Accomplish More by Emily Fletcher, she teaches you how to med meditate. She really talks about when we're under that much stress and we're in that constant state of fight or flight, our, all of our systems kind of respond. And that's why we notice not only our mental health suffers, but as well as our physical body suffers. Because our fight or flight response was really we have to have it, of course, because it's meant to protect us. However, when we're in that constant state all the time, our whole body goes into overdrive. So, I don't know about you guys, but this last year, as I've said in other videos, has been really stressful with the pandemic and learning how to, you know, create whole new systems in our own families about what works and what isn't working. Um, you know, whether it's work and, and if you have kids at school and managing our relationships and also taking care of ourselves. So how can we manage stress? You know, when the pandemic first started, it was really like everything that we had done before to manage our stress, we now couldn't do. And in fact, I, I did a whole video on um, stress and taking care of our mental health during the pandemic when this all started. So it's almost been a year, guys, and um, and so what are we doing? How, not only what are we doing, how are we doing when it comes to taking care of ourselves? So here's a few things that I have found to be helpful. One, recognize that you're under a lot of stress and, um, and how to focus on being more present and in the moment. I'm not gonna tell you just to slow down because I know for some of you, sometimes that's not really an option recognize how your body's feeling you know if you're noticing you're not wanting to eat as much or every time you eat you don't feel so good or you're having a hard time falling asleep you know maybe it's time to say what are some things that i need to do to take care of myself so that's just it guys you know in the past year if we're going to reflect I, I want you to reflect on what have been some helpful ways that you have learned even in this past year to help yourself cope with stress. So some of the things along the way that we're reading a lot more about and we're hearing a lot more about um, in you know the mental health profession as well as in the medical profession is the power of meditation. 
you know, there are so many apps, you know, as I said earlier, Emily Fletcher, Ziva Meditation, Headspace, Calm. There are so many, you know, places and spaces for you to learn how to meditate. Even if you just start with some deep breathing exercises. These are some things, you know, meditation, deep breathing, these are ways that our body not only emotionally responds, but physically responds. So, you know, you guys have probably heard a lot about it, but it is so important to really find that space, whether it's five, you know, five minutes a day or longer, where you can really do some deep breathing and learn how to meditate. It's a wonderful gift that you're gonna give yourself. The second thing to do is to focus on what are some things that bring you some joy or meaning throughout the day. Now you might be saying like, Monica, I'm too busy, or what do you mean joy or meaning? Like this year has been so hard. We've gone through so much grief. I don't wanna just, you know, not focus on the things that I've lost. So, you know, a couple things that I wanna to say to that guys is this has been a difficult year for most of us and most of us has ha have had some significant amount of grief um, and and so I'm not saying find things to joy to ignore your grief, but actually to help you cope with your grief. You know, we can't stuff. I'm not suggesting stuffing or, you know, denying that there's been a lot of loss this year. What I'm suggesting is that we acknowledge our grief and we find ways to work through it or walk through it. And also it's important to focus on joy, focus on aliveness. You know, focus on what feels meaningful, even if what feels meaningful for today is that you cook yourself a nice meal or you um, make your bed in the morning. Like finding meaning in the day doesn't have to be big, huge things. It can be small things throughout the day. So, you know, so maybe that's two things. You know, it's finding things that bring a smile to your face and joy as well as finding little, little tiny things that are meaningful. Another thing that I think is really important to help us manage stress is what are you putting in your body? You know, if you're putting in a lot of alcohol, that's not gonna help manage your stress. It's actually gonna intensify it and make it worse. Um, but if you're deciding to put in some healthy foods in your body, then that is gonna help you manage stress. You know, I've just started doing a lot of research and I actually just start, started reading a book called um, Your brain on food and it's all about how our gut health also affects our mental health so there's more to that to come in later videos but what i will say and what i've read so far is that the more we can put healthy foods in our body the better we feel so that's another one and then uh, another way to help us manage stress is movement so and I know I've said this on a lot of videos too, but in what ways are you moving your body through light activity, through fun like dancing, or even house cleaning, also through maybe some high intense exercise. So movement and activity is up to you, you know, I, but it is important to do. Uh, again, one of the ways that we help our mental health and we help us cope with stress is through movement exercise so what's an activity you like to do walking uh, push-ups and sit-ups in the morning and jumping jacks so light calisthenics when you wake up going to the gym maybe it is dancing and if you have a partner or some kids at home all dance together just as a way to kind of move your body throughout the day um you know Yoga is also another wonderful way to cope with stress and it's also exercise. And since the pandemic, guys, there are a lot of videos online, exercise videos that you can even get for free. So I highly encourage you to do that. The last thing to do for this video, I would say, and these are just some quick tips, okay? So we're talking, the last thing I would do is, um, Find a hobby, which might be connected to joy or meaning, but find something that is special just for you that you can nurture and continue to grow in time.
You know, sometimes people say, I have no idea how to do a hobby or I don't have time for a hobby or I just want you to think back to a time in your life where you were doing something that you found a lot of joy in or that was that's a really fun memory and, you know, think about what that is. And then, you know, how can you start incorporating it into your life in small ways? So, um, for example, um, I really like to play basketball and I used to play when I was a kid. I'm not a kid anymore, obviously, but um, my kids also like to play basketball. So one of the things that we've started to incorporate is we play basketball together. And that is something that, you know, I know I'm doing it with them. However, you know, there are times when maybe they're at school or something, I can find myself, you know, maybe going and shooting a few hoops by myself. But these are some ways that I incorporate uh, something, doing something that I love um, whether it's with my family or doing it on my own. Now, it, participating in a hobby, I get when you're really busy, you might not have a lot of time to do that. That's why I say, how can you incorporate this hobby in small ways? So, how do you manage stress? What have you learned in this past year about how to manage your stress in healthy ways? And what are some quick ways to do it? And like I said, I've given you about five tips on how to do that, you know. Um, so I think it's important, you know, like I said, meditate, deep breathing, um, finding things that can bring some joy into your life, what's meaningful, small things that are meaningful. Find ways to make sure you're eating healthy and you're moving your body. And, you know, the last one is what's that hobby? Now, again, guys, these are the things that help you. Stress is all around. It's not going away. So these are some things that help you cope when there are stressful situations. The one last thing I'll say as I wrap up this video is another way to really help you cope with stress is to validate all the range of your emotions. When I was talking about joy, I was talking about also honoring your grief. I don't want you just to jump to, I'm really stressed, so let me find something that's joyful. When we are able to validate our emotions, it helps us, you know, step forward. So make sure as you're experiencing different kinds of stress, validate yourself first and then create a plan, whether it's deep breathing, meditation, movement, participating in your hobby, you know, nurturing yourself with something healthy or, you know, some food that you know that will fuel your body. And it doesn't have to be all those things all at once. It can be small things. So, you know, at the end of the night, if you do like a little gratitude or just a reminder of what is one thing that you did for yourself today. And it can be something small or it can be something big. All right, guys. I hope that you found this video to be helpful in regarding and learning how to manage your stress. Please Feel free to subscribe to my channel for weekly updates all about relationships and mental health. And I hope you have a great day. Take care.